Okay, so far uh, in this manual testing or functional testing classes, we covered in the module one till this roles and responsibilities, isn't it? Along with you know objective and uh, what are, who are the audience and the introduction. Now uh, it's time to get into the principles of software testing. Uh, we have few principles uh, of software testing and let me put that into the place. So there are seven principles in software testing. One is testing show presence of defects. The you know while you're testing the applic any application, these principles will help you uh, definitely to you know to go forward with your uh, identifying the bugs and coverage part test coverage part and how to test the application right these principles will for you know definitely help you so by following these principles we need to uh, ensure we are testing the application right uh, okay so one is testing show presence of defects and second one is exhaustive testing is not possible and third one is very important early testing and fourth one is default clustering right and fourth one is fifth one is pesticide paroxide paradox sorry and testing is context dependent and absence of error flashiness flashy sorry so let me go with the number one right so instead of Going in a uh, you know, definition way, let's go into the uh, as a practical way, right? Testing show presence of defect. What it means? Testing shows present of defects is uh, you know uh, to understand this, you know, you need to be. Uh, let me take an example, right? Uh, what is this uh, testing shows presence of defects? If I take two folders. Right. Generally, this is a very famous example. Everyone speaks about this. I'm taking the same example. If you take two folders, why I'm taking this example is it's very natural to you as well. If I ask you, hey, I have a folder one and I have a folder two. And if I want you to test these two folders, uh, you know, moving the files between these folders, what you do? Uh, generally what we do is okay let, let's do one thing let, let me create a file file one and I would say copy this file and paste it over here that is one test right that is I'm just copying it I'm not moving it and the other one is uh, you know, I I want to uh, you know uh, for example this folder B so let folder two and I don't have a security access that means I, I should not paste anything in the under this as per the security rules and I'm trying to move folder one copying to folder two again that means like for example uh, I'm sorry file two and I want to move file two to file uh, folder two sorry okay but if I don't have access to folder two, what is that? What is that should show, right? It should give an error that hey, you don't have an access, isn't it? And if folder, the third example I'm going to third uh, third example is folder two doesn't have a space to store any other files. So file one to folder two, but folder two doesn't have any storage capacity. So these are all presents you know you, you know it may give a defect sometimes it is a functionality but may give a defense so testing you know to show that kind of testing cases while you doing your testing right so that's one of the principle that is covering uh you know the uh, testing shows presence of defects while you're testing itself you you may get it okay this may error out because this is a security rule and it should not allow if it allowed it's a breakage right so that kind of situations what you know you need to start with the testing any questions on this so see the the test case go endless i don't say it is stop it will be stopped whatever i just tested i'm just giving examples right so this kind of testing has to be happen any questions on this 
and everyone is clear on the first point right let's go for the next uh, next one sample form with 15 fields in all. I'm just trying to open a form which may have number of fields, right? Like 15 to 20 fields like that. For example, I'm just taking this uh, field registration form and it have you know this many fields right uh, whatever it may be uh, 20 or 30 fields if if i ask you to test this all the fields right uh, generally if i give uh, 10 test case for each each field for example uh, uh, full name allows 50 characters then and it allows uh, alt, uh, no, only special no no it won't allow the special characters so it only allows alphanumeric alphanumeric uh, you know text one two three like this right it, it allows both characters as well as new numbers alphanumerics but it won't allow any special characters and is a limit of 50 characters only and it should it should allow uh, all the characters uh, including every language when i say language the you know the hindi the telugu whatnot right or international languages like spanish and all so to test this field and not only this field every field in this form you will get like you know 15 to the power of five tests you know five that means that many test cases will be come up with the different personas that is a different test data right so can you test that can you test that that kind of situation if you have that kind of uh, test cases you cannot test that right you cannot test that many test cases i mean you can test but it will take a, a significant amount of time isn't it so that comes under the exhaustive testing that is called exhaustive testing that means you're you're testing endless you go with different scenarios different test data but that will never end right then is it worth to do such testing sometimes i don't think so because you'll end up doing that testing entire project right which is doesn't make sense you're not releasing for those fields only right so that's where you need to take exhaustive testing uh, you know you need to take risk based testing right risk based testing that means you cannot test those many fields or those many test cases with a particular test data that means you need to choose few test cases or test data that will uh, you know that that will calculate your risk base that means you're taking a risk you're not exceeding all the test cases so that you are taking a risk right here that means risk base testing you are taking a risk what kind of risk it is what is a risk means right for example if i say hey test the operating system os windows os or some os so i give uh, three scenarios right choose the scenario which may get more errors for example i would say hey play a video in windows or mac and second one is open a word document and fill something and save it and the third one is open multiple graphic graphical applications and deal with that deal with the risk play with that example in these three scenarios right if i ask you to test what could be the risk based testing that you do can you please comment out in your chat or something like that 
out of these three what is your uh, if i ask you hey what's the gut feeling to fail failure case of these three scenarios okay yeah most of them type third one right which is a risk based that means <clears throat> see the most uh chances of occurring errors when you do open multiple graphical application and deal with that that means multitasking multitasking application multitasking is what can give error right can give defects of or errors so this is one of the principles instead of you hitting in the wrong area you need to hit your application in the right area uh Uh, yeah third one is a high risk that's true uh, ramu uh, so you are hitting the you are you're, you're hitting the right test case here in this case that this may give errors see opening one application yeah you will test it you may play it and you know you will test one one round of test that's it you don't invest more here then open a word out document and update you know give it and save it one round of is okay but this may give more errors or more defects so you need to smart enough in doing this kind of testing so that you'll find defects right you'll find more issues so that's where you know whenever you have exhaustive testing exhaustive test cases so you need to take a call in choosing the test cases or testing approach where it can occur more right that kind of testing is called exhaustive testing this is one of the principle when you have a lot many to test you have to choose the priority test cases that is p1 test case that we call in the uh, real time so you need to choose that test cases which is may impact business as well as the system may fail to you know deal with that load or whatever it is right that is called uh, exhaustive testing any questions so far okay can i can i go forward okay there is another uh i i will take defect clustering as a next example next principle so what is different clustering what is different clustering is defect clustering which states that a small number of modules contains most of the defect uh, you know detected that means you your application will be you know for example if you say uh, your application has like uh, 100 modules and 100 modules and that sub modules will be there you may be confused what is modules here what is sub modules right i'll give a normal example in your day-to-day -day activities if you take a instagram right there is a section to feed there's a section to photography videos and reels isn't it so these four sections are four different modules to instagram right so and reels may subdivided with multiple modules like uh, short videos large videos whatnot i'm just giving you examples okay uh, you know that kind of is called sub modules you you're segregating some sub subbing sub modules and un under the main module right so while you what is different clustering is you know uh, there could be a small number of modules you know small modules like like i said photography or uh, videos you know which contains most of the defects that means these small modules are linked to the main modules right or integrated to the main modules so you need to you need to cluster them and test those small small modules very thoroughly because that is what linking or integrated with other modules if you thoroughly test that small modules that means you're you're making sure that okay this module has these defects and these modules are 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 been tested thoroughly and there are no high defects right then you can go forward to integrate the other modules and get tested right that means you're ensuring that okay if there is a isolating the small modules testing first and then integrating the other modules and if any defects comes in the particular integration that you can easily isolate that hey this is an integration bug that means this kind of bugs may exist in the system and you need to test it 
I know you may get confused here. I will take the same Instagram. If I uh, I say a feed is one, when I say feed, it's a post or post, uh, post uh, any, you know, any status or something like that. Photos, videos, and I said real. Uh, first, you know, which is important in Instagram. In nowadays, it's reels, right? So what you do is, first you will test reels. What you test in the reels? So you upload reels in different, you know, themes or whatever it is, right? Themes, right? Whatever themes it is, right? Uh, it could be you, you go with different voices or different songs or different uh, slow motion, whatnot. You uploaded the reel now. Now you te you tested that upload reel in different cases. Like you have uploaded you know large number of files or with very quality. Sometimes you apply the filters. These are all testings, right? These are all the functionalities of the particular reels. You start testing that particular te you know uh, things and try to identify the bugs under the particular reels, isn't it? So far so clear. Okay. Now you tested like 20 test cases. Example, you have 20 test cases to upload the, uh, the, the scenarios and you tested it. Now you you found two bugs under it and those are fixed, right? Now, what is your next next testing? You go to the feed or post so you you upload the reel already you in the reels now you tag it or post the reel in your page you will test this kind of situations of scenarios now right this is my nothing but you have a feed which is a different module and we have a upload reels which is a different module now you're integrating both of them you're testing it and if you found a bug here, bug that real is slow in playing. That means it's not fast enough to play. It is very slow. It is getting very slow. Whereas when you go to the reels and do it, it is it is slowing. It is playing fine. You may feel that hey, what is the difference? Just I'm I'm using the same reel here, right? But there is an integration between them. That's where you know if you upload the reel, it won't show in the, your wall uh, unless until you you post it, right? Sometimes, so that is called integration. That means you already tested upload. That means it is it was playing fine, but while you posted in the, your Insta, it is started uh, giving you know slowness. That's a that's a problem, isn't it? You need to fix that problem now. I clearly understand that hey while I play a reel directly when I go to the reels or videos it is fine now when I posted it in my wall it is where it is giving a problem that's an identification right that's a bug you identified now with all this kind of testing integration testing or isolated testing what not right now if for the first time you tested this and and now you fixed uh, you made everything fixed that means testing is done and now everything is fixed what's next what's next everything is fixed what next so this test case are so valid for now and you tested it you fixed it and you made it fixed for the next time and okay now you release this instagram and the next time <clears throat> someone has any questions hey i will give, give a pause if you have any questions please pause me don't hesitate to pause me okay this is the first release that i have assume that this is the first release that was happened to instagram now in the next release they made one more 
module available uh, available in insta so you definitely available in insta you definitely again you need to test these two because something is changed you should not it should not break other uh, you know, those issues once you have a new release or new feature enabled in the instagram right because these are the major cases now if you keep on test the same 20s cases forever forever irrespective of new release made for example there is a new release which may have a future call uh, uh, like uh, you know create reels out of your photo journey that means your pix journey the journey from one year right uh, okay journey that means take last one year photos and create a reel automatically what you do now is okay i will you will test this functionality def for sure which is very good right but you will also test this reels upload posting upload again and again these whatever 20 test cases that i am talking about right but there could be a new feature or new feature comes under the reels there is a technology change comes under the reels they say that hey there is something i added on top of reels as well right but are these test cases valid now they are valid but enough to test this particular reels functionality now anyone has uh, please respond to this question whenever there is a such reels update feature and if i test the same 20 test cases for the upload reel theme module are they enough to cover up that uh, to identify the bugs please comment out or in the comments are they enough can you can you come again please what i say is there is a new feature that has been released in instagram what it does is it automatically creates the reels out of your photo journey for the particular year okay that means there is a small change that happened to how the reels are created in instagram okay now with this feature i tested everything with this feature which is very good now with nothing is there now i need to do a regression around this feature because i'm newly releasing it to the production now i go to the regression suite and say that i will execute only these 10 20 test cases are they enough they will not be enough because there's yeah. a new technology developed exactly that means whatever there in your regression suite is already tested and sometimes it may be you know older older enough right so you need to upgrade your test cases as well by reviewing them that's where the different clustering comes under as well right first you need to isolate your time modules and test it and integrate my modules and test it then whenever the new feature enables you go back your test cases and ensure that your isolated modules have a good test cases otherwise you will not find bugs and it will be a bug leakage to the production and that's where our application will be lapsed or collapsed any questions on this different clustering there are three Literally. parts that i covered three parts that i covered isolate your mod sub modules or small modules and test it thoroughly and then go to integrated you know that particular module may integrates with the multiple modules go for the testing thoroughly test it integrated part and ensure there's no defects that is two second point and third one is whenever new releases happen and if the particular module test cases are you know to re-review that and then ensure that those are enough to test that particular module again otherwise you will lose the cases which has to be tested and the application may get out of your bucket with bugs that is what different clustering guys if you have any questions please raise your questions i will pause here any any other questions please that's clear thank you okay yeah see uh, with uh, along with different clustering that is i am also covered with you know third point is nothing but uh, you know pesticide parax docs which means 
you review your test cases or all the test cases that you have while you're testing the regression suite and every every release you need to ensure that your regression suite is up to date test cases are up to date to it so that you you don't so that you don't leave the bugs behind right that's what uh, pesticide paradox that means you are ensuring that there is no leakage uh, for your hard work that you you are doing hard work in testing and ensuring that you know you are giving a bug free product which is <clears throat> which is okay bug free product is what our achievement but there there is not there is no hard rule that you always give 100% bug free but however the major functionality should not be broken because like that because something is not tested right so that is what you need to ensure always your test cases are reviewed revised and up to date to identify the new bugs because new technologies new technologies released okay so uh, there is a concept called next uh, you know point is early testing which is very important guys in your day-to-day -day activities also this is very important can anyone guess what is early testing uh, early testing means once the developer is done the like basic testing unit testing then uh, it, so suppose the sprint level if they are not assigning they can do the testing mm -hmm. yeah that's one other thing yeah I think I'm right yeah, well, that is one of the early testing point. Yeah, yeah. See, what we say is, hey, once we, uh, what is our goal? So achievement or goal is no bugs in the software. That means hundred percent, hundred percent defect free. Right? Do you think it is possible, guys? Have you saw any software which is 100% defect free? It could be a system bug or functional bug, what not, right? Is it possible? <clears throat> it may not be possible always. It may not be possible, isn't it? Because software has many flaws in itself, it, uh, language like language or whatever it is, systems itself. So there is, it is not possible, but what your achievement is to ensure, ensure no major or functional functional bugs right this is what your achievement so you, always you know to aim for this i don't say that you should not aim for this but you also need to ensure that your functionalities are not broken because of the bugs right that is a first and foremost uh, your, your your goal isn't it that means so where the functionality functionals will come functionality will come where you get the functionalities like i said other day you will get from ba like a brs document or or if it is a sprint level and you call a user stories right i will talk about sprint and agile later but assume that this is called brs business requirement documents okay ba or po will get you that isn't it are we clear so far now what you what I just said on the first day is hey once you got a BRS or user stories the first thing that you need to do is you need to understand right understand the requirement of the particular client or the particular client or the other or the product I would say both are same okay so the, what it means you will start adopting the particular business to enable the features or functionality that you are going to work and then you will ask questions hey what is this requirement what is this what is this for and you may have some suggestions hey you said uh, like this i also have a, another suggestion this may business is what um, you know for example if it is i will go to instagram only uh, so you, there is a requirement called reels need to be updated or trimmed on top of existing reels this is a requirement for example so you may say that hey why can't i apply filters on existing free reels itself so that that can be fine-tuned with the latex technology 
because the rails was created 10 years five years back which doesn't have a, a filter functionality now i have a filter functionality why can't i update my existing reels with the filters it's a small functionality right that means when you analyze the bug sorry analyze the requirement you are getting a new features that means you're correcting your requirements going back to the product owner and saying your things you understand the requirements you're also correcting early you're testing your requirements itself you may ensuring that hey this is all the another feature that can be added advantage to your whatever feature that you've got now right that means you're debating with your product owner this may be a business requirement also that is your early testing the requirements this phase likely early testing comes under every phase design phase as well when i say design the modules will be designed and you will be part of that call if you thoroughly understand that design you may ask questions whatever you feel hey if i go like this if i upload a reel which is already a reel i just want to upload the same reel and want to apply a filter uh, what happens right if i apply a reel which already have a filter i want to apply the same filter what happens this is what you ask questions while you go with the design phases that means you're giving a hint to the product development team that hey uh, it may occur in this way as well people may use in this way as well right that is called early testing that is you are ensuring that your designs also design in that way that it won't capture the bugs while you really testing it you're giving a hints there that is what early testing you need to give that that's where your expertise will come right and the third level which is very very important when you start testing you go proactively and do one round of early testing that is you go end to end testing and you may find from bugs right that that's where uh, you, you you integrate your requirement knowledge or your business knowledge while you're testing it right so there is a much more uh, possibility to find out more bugs at that point so these three areas uh, where you know to find out your bugs again i'm saying there is no 100 percent defect free but you need to ensure that whatever you're testing is covering major functionality or business rules that clients can use it instead of you focusing on the wrong area always first focus on the right area where is business business is what driving the software development so you need to give a such uh, uh, you know such uh, confidence to client clients that your business functionality is good you can go with that there is a corner cases which may fail in production as well but uh, you know if you are not testing the right functionality that will impact for day one there is a corner bugs they may impact your functionality again that is a rare cases right if major functionality is working there could be a workaround for corner cases but if major functionality itself not working or business is not being utilized right with this early testing concept uh, the clients may say that i don't want this product at all right because it's nothing to do with my business that's what early testing so ensure you understand the business first and while developing the requirement or while developing the designs itself give your inputs that hey you may get this kind of problems you may get this kind of problems, or adding this one requirement is also a possible and it gives more added, more added advantage value to the product right that is what early testing any questions on this this is very important guys i you know this makes you difference between other testers to you so always always digest the business that you are working to software is to solve the problems as i said in the day one it is not to just uh, store some files it is solving some problems in the real time or real business that means while you're working any other business that's where the domain knowledge is very important to you all you need to adopt or understand the business like anything that you need to understand like it's my my business right that gives you two leverages one is a unique person in you that means you will you'll get in and out and you will be very important don't mix it this with uh, uh, other functionalities because sometimes 
business one may not uh, may not be same as business two so you need to uh, understand whatever business that you're working you need to work as per that for example if i ask there is a reels and in the business one and the business two only feeds like twitter you should not integrate hey i want video here because that's not the, the re twitter business right so always adopt your current business only and you can suggest on top of that whatever the features that they need but don't cross uh, compare with other business line of business always co compare with a business that particular person is working for example you are comparing instagram you can compare with uh, uh, other uh, you know like facebook facebook is a competitor but still facebook there's a competitor right you can always compare your business with competitor business and give a suggestions rather than you're not you know don't compare with non competitor right non uh, uh, related business okay that makes you unique in terms of you know testing as well as domain knowledge these two are very important for testers very very important any questions i know i'm just taking time here because this is very important concept in your day to day life what makes this unique is hey few people may say that i'm not a great student in my btech or mc or whatever whatever studies that i have but so the difference between the studies and the job is context you need to get domain knowledge and context or requirement knowledge while you're doing your job you should not by heart something and give that in front of testing right you cannot do that it is a failure case you need to understand deep to give an output of a you know good testing it is not a by hearted subject it is it's a live and you're giving value added to you know one of the business so don't mix up your career uh, your career with your academic results a uh, few people may be very strong in both the areas that if they they understand things in, in studies and they apply it and and they also do the same in the job or business right that's where the successful uh, uh, formula few people may be uh, doesn't understand in studies but when they come to job level they understand very well and they play an important role that's a success story as well and there is a few cases i don't say i, I don't say you know these are more major cases but few cases where they're toppers in the studies but they apply they they were like by hearted people they will struggle in the jobs because there is nothing to buy hat here there are always always exist to understand and apply your knowledge than by hearting and applying it so don't think that you need to buy hat something and give a uh, you know give to someone you always get a passion to understand the requirements of business and apply your in so that you will be unique in the, your job that's where people will be very unique uh, when they apply their own intelligence instead of by heart knowledge okay so I, I i that's what i'm trying to give here here as well i'm not giving a definition that is comes under the early testing right i'm just giving examples so that you people will really understand what is the importance of it and apply it in the real time any questions so far testing in is context dependent what is this means <laughs> I just covered it right in early testing one of the example called context is always important right context is always important while you doing test some testing uh, for example you're testing an e-commerce application your context should be uh, you know very clear that hey I'm testing e-commerce e-commerce is to buy and uh, you know, sell the products in the online it will have a list I can add them into the cart and I will have a payment. It's a small example. So context of testing that while you're testing it, you should be assuming that there is a real user that does it. You need to be into the context of testing. You should not do the testing like, uh, like I said, right? Um, uh, um, so if we have a testing called e-commerce application and I'm asking you to test, 
there is another testing called folders testing that I just did right but the context between e-commerce application right? e-commerce application and folder testing are, are they both same testing between these two functionalities are same no right okay so the context between these two uh, testings are not same so while you testing e-commerce application the business understanding and the way of you testing is different and while you testing folder structure testing you are your way of testing is different because it's a operating system testing included with folder structure testing whereas the e-commerce is a business uh, web testing that means you know to go to different web browsers and test this along with the functionality whatever functionality is that it that is called context dependent see always test the functionality with the context rather than just applying the same principles what i'm talking today have a seven principles all may not apply for the same functionality right you need to give right principles right context while you're testing instead of applying the same set of rules same techniques same methodologies no it's not uh, that that were you know that kind of things right so while you're testing e-commerce application you know to say that hey there is a multiple products with the same uh, same type that means mobiles mobile may have different products i need to showcase that products when they search it company i need to showcase the company it has a features that i need to showcase and when i review that and compare the, those products and i want to add one product to the card and i go forward with the payment that's a flow end-to-end -end journey always ensure that you test end-to-end -end journey while you're testing small piece also in between go with end-to-end -end journey that's what the business and while you're testing a folder structure you just give four or five test cases like i said moving one folder to one file one folder to another folder deleting it the same or in the folder two it has the same file name and you are trying to move and you in folder two you don't have an access you are trying to move this is the security added here right and some more additional test cases may add it or may not be added when it comes to folder structure but these two different two are due two different applications or two different functionalities you should not apply same approach same methodologies and same techniques you should be in the context of the testing okay any questions on this okay okay absence of uh yeah this is i, I think i already covered this i'm just giving you an, uh, one more point here uh, absence of error is not uh falsy right uh, that means the product that is software product software product or software application these are all same to get the terminology guys don't get confused okay product that you you are developing may have 99 percent defect rate, but but while you're developing if you're not doing early testing in this concept right while you're developing the you know requirements if you've not done any early testing and finally you all that means entire team end up develop wrong requirement is it useful no right though it is 99 percent defect free if it is developed for the wrong requirement it is absolutely not a good product is it that means finding defects is not your job as i, as I said earlier it's a bookish knowledge finding defects defects is a bookish knowledge okay software testing is not to find a defects right it is to address a business requirement or business needs to the customer that means as i said you always need to be in the context of testing and do a do, get a full domain knowledge or what is we are going to test it is it what is a useful 
of these requirements to the customer you need to be in the context first right then you have to start testing that is called early testing you need to understand the requirement ask more questions on the requirements get get your value added add, you know your your thoughts also added maybe you are valid or may not be a valid don't hesitate that someone is not adding your value adds because customers may say no for them right that's fine you give your suggestions if there was or those are added that's fine otherwise no problem you will correct yourself right so get full understanding of the business and then find the bugs that is what required that means get business understanding and get and get the context do early testing and then design test cases that's what i'm going to do test cases and then test it now if you are bug your, your product is not 99 percent at least 90 percent defect free okay and with right requirements what happens Cluster, client will accept or reject this will definitely accept this right client will will accept this in the first case you developed 99 percent defective but with the no use of requirement that means you have developed a wrong requirement client will reject it isn't it and then now you as a qe right or a quality assurance you get business understanding and the con they could get the context and do early testing and design the test cases that's what you have executed while you got a build and test it and give 90 percent defect free with the right requirements definitely client will accept however you also need to ensure remaining 10 percent caught that is different story but this is called absence of errors fallacy fallacy right that means you are in the right context and giving the right requirement to the uh, client so that he makes use of it instead of he put that in the shelf right any questions guys i think that's all we have for today this covers up uh, principles uh, I know I took time because it's very important concept in your software testing but uh, this is this is very important to get you into the context of software testing instead of you learning it don't buy hard it guys trust me try to adopt it try to get what I'm saying or if you have a questions I'm happy to tell you may as many times as I can but don't buy hard any definition if I ask you what is software principles, okay, these are the seven principles. Each principle has its own, uh, you know, own importance while we testing. So get a context, get a understanding instead of by hearting it. Get out of you know that by hearting mode. Just get into the real business mode. Your job is not to write your exams. Your job is to give some importance to the business or real time world, right? You have to get the context. Likely, how say say when I say get context, right? How we are utilizing your WhatsApp. You got a context. You can exchange a message, right? That's the same problem solution that you have your software development. There is a, some problem that you are solving to the business or customer. You need to get get those requirements, understand and get the context. Okay. Any questions? I will get take a pause. I'll take a questions here. Any questions on principles of software testing? I will just post the notes here. This is this this is these are seven principles, like I said. Uh, testing shows presence of defects, exhaustive testing, defect clustering, and uh, uh, pesticide paradox, early testing, testing in the context dependent, absence of uh, error fallacy. Is it clear, guys? Please please uh, type in clear that you are clear on the concept that I just explained today okay BRS documents how to understand okay yeah that's a good question uh, size Sri Priya 
BRS big business requirement documents, right? Those are given by product owner or BA. They will clearly explain while they giving to you. It is not a document that should you know you should get it and you should understand. They will give a context of the business where you need to be very focused to understand that, and they also give a detailed understanding of each point in your BRS document. So that that will become from your uh, BA. And one more much yeah, you know much important thing is. Uh, so people will uh, say see so far if you are if you are a student I'm say, just saying to the people who are students if you are a student you have a habit of you know learning something and putting on your exams like that right but in your job it is not like that whenever you have some questions right you can go back to the documents and refer it or you can go back to your Google and refer that get a clarification get understanding all the sources can be utilized no need of by heart it you can get everything whatever you need while you do testing if you don't understand what is one of the principal called absence of error classy you can go go back to google and type it understand it and come back and do testing there is no such rule that you need to register everything in your mind sometimes you may lose it that's fine go back and understand and come back likely you don't need to adopt or you know do, not adopt you don't need to buy hard the brs document you need to understand if you have any questions go back and under, again refer it and do a testing and write a test cases okay that's where test case helps us so you understand the business and you write test cases instead of you resisting everything in your mind no need to register always be open you have a leverage of taking uh, going back to the documents and referring it and understanding it instead of you by hearting it don't buy heart and never buy heart <laughs> domain knowledge specific document it's how to get it hey hey domain knowledge is nothing but see there could there could be a documents that they not be a documents right so while you for example, you started working on the banking domain. What happens in banking domain? You can Google it. You can do see uh, YouTube videos and get the knowledge, right? So what happens? There could be a five or six modules, uh, majorly, where is account summary, transfers, credit card management, payment management, investment management. These are all domain. The banking will work for this business. So that's what domain, right? You need to understand and you need to uh, you know, get that knowledge by looking at uh, different videos or different uh, Google Google it and get the knowledge or sometimes you can log into your own bank account and see what are the modules that we have what is the purpose of that modules like that right instead of by hiding it again so yeah VM Kumar which is good question you need to get knowledge by researching it no one will let you know by the way you are you're definitely while explaining the BRS document, your PO or BA will give you a context and detailed knowledge or domain knowledge. But if you want to get more and more knowledge on the particular sector, you need to research. You need to go to go go to beyond that, get knowledge, get domain knowledge. That's make you unique. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Testing bank domain page open bank name site. Yeah, you can open it and you can understand the knowledge there Any questions before I wind up this? Okay, thank you team